I get this question asked a lot of times that, hey Mehul, how we should go ahead and deploy our own website online? You know, if you are using Node.js and MongoDB, you know, the things get a little bit more complicated because now you have to manage your own servers. Because if you're using Create React app or any other similar technology, then you can just go ahead and use out of the box solutions like Netlify or maybe even Vercel for Next.js. But once you move to a little bit of custom things, you know, databases are there, all sorts of stuff is there. Then you need your own servers and you need to understand how the deployment works as well. So if you're somebody who wants to learn something new today and how you can deploy your own servers in a very basic way, then this video is for you. So let's just go ahead and take a look at how we can deploy our, this project, which we did in the MongoDB crash course. If you want to actually understand how this code works, then you can click on the eye icon here and we can just, you know, go back to the MongoDB crash course in which we just go over through how we can create a very simple to-do application and store it with a database and have all sorts of functions and REST API calls as well. But in this video, let's just go ahead and take a look at how we can deploy it. So before we start, I would like to thank the sponsor of the video, that is Linode, and we will be using a Linode server to deploy our website online. Now Linode is a cloud hosting provider which provides you access to servers, which is one of the solutions which they provide, which can be used to host any sort of website. It does not matter if you're using Node.js, React application, Angular, Python, anything. So you can go ahead and sign up on Linode using the link in the description below, which will give you free $100 credits on Linode to experiment and play around. So not only you can follow this video, but you can follow many other tutorials or you can play around as much as you want. It helps the channel, it helps you. So it's a win-win for everybody. So once you sign up, you're gonna be coming to a dashboard interface like this. Once you are at the dashboard for Linode, if you're gonna create a new Linode instance, which is gonna fire up a new server on the Linode infrastructure. So in this video, I'm gonna go with Ubuntu, right? You might go with CentOS if you want, if you know how to operate with that. So you, it's, it's your own choice. I'm gonna select region as the US one. Um, you can pretty much go ahead and select a local one if you want, if you're creating a local website. So if you're from Asia, you can probably choose one of these regions. If you're from US or if you know your traffic would be coming from US or you know somewhere on the North America side, then you can choose any one of them. I'm going with Dallas in this one. And here's the you know, the deal, which server you want. Now you can see that as the price increases, servers become more powerful as well. Now for this video, I'm gonna go with a $10 Linode server instance. Why? Because it gives us two gigabytes of RAM, which is something which we might need because we will be running MongoDB. We will be running Nginx for serving our, you know, our static files. And we will also be running a node process so that would not consume 2 GB RAMs, but it's still to have a good buffer. So once we do that, you can go ahead and create a label for this thing. And I can say instance on maybe like Node.js server. You can add a tag if you want. You can also enter a root password or you can add an SSH key. For this example, I'm gonna enter a root password, but I would highly, highly recommend you to add an SSH key if you are doing any sort of production work. You never want to have a root password authentication on production servers, but rather an SSH key to be added. Now we are not gonna get into SSH key because that is something I would like to explain in a whole different story. So I'm just gonna add a root password and say uh, root at the rate one, two, three, four, right? So there we go. Then I'm gonna leave backups and private IP right here and I'm gonna click on create. This is gonna span up a new spawn a new server and it might take a little bit of time to get started. Meanwhile, that is happening. Let's just go to GitHub and create our repository for hosting our code. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually go to, actually I should have this code available on the repository, right? So if I go to my profile and if I go to node auth YouTube, not node auth, um, I think I do not have that pushed up. So let's just go ahead and do that as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new repository and I'm gonna say node mongodb to do, right? And this is will be a public repository. You might want it to private for your own project, but I'm keeping it public for now. 
And once we have this repository with us, I can just copy this and I can say in the repository I am, which is this project right here, I'm gonna go ahead and say git init. We can touch a git ignore file to add node modules here. Node modules, right? And I'm gonna say git remote add origin and we'll paste this thing. Then we can say initial commit and we can push our changes to our master branch. This will create a new master branch obviously on GitHub and you would be able to see all your source code. Now this is the source code which would be used to build your project. And uh, if we go back on the dashboard, you can see our Linodes, that is a single instance in this case, has spun up. So if you go ahead and take a look here, you can see you get a two, you get two IP addresses. The one is IPv4 and another one is IPv6. If we go back, if you go to volumes, you see we do not have any volume yet because we don't need any volume apart from the 50 GB which comes by default. Then we get access to the networking part in the networking uh, region. You can see we have SSH access like this, which would obviously have, which would obviously ask for our root password. So let's just go ahead and copy this thing and go back to our terminal and paste it, right? So if you're running Linux or if you're running Mac OS, then this would work out of the box. You do not have to do anything. If you're on Windows, you can use a client like Git Bash. Now you can go ahead and download something known as Git Bash. Just Google it. This is the first link. Download this client and you will be having an op a terminal interface like this only when you open this Git Bash. And then you can pretty much just go ahead and do what I'm doing right now. So once we do that, you can see that it asks me that, hey, that this is a computer which you have never connected with. So are you sure, you know, if uh, you want to proceed? And we say yes here. And then it asks me for the password. Now remember this password is same as what you entered earlier. So this is gonna be root at the rate one, two, three, four in my case. And don't worry, you won't not have access to this computer because I will destroy it after the video is done. So you should probably go ahead and create your own uh, instance right here if you want to work with it. So you can see that we are into root at the rate localhost. So first thing I would want you to do is because this is an Ubuntu system, I know because that's what we selected. First thing you can do is go ahead and install something known as apt get install something known as htop and not really apt get just apt install because htop is gonna be um, you know giving you some nice information on how your system looks like so you can see that we have a 512 megabytes of swap by default enabled on this instance we have two gigabytes of ram and we have a single core of cpu right so that means we have 2 gb ram available to us for our programs to use just like that so first things first, let's just go ahead and install Nginx for serving our static files. Now by static files, what I mean is right now you can see if I go back to VS Code, inside our server, you can see we are using Express to serve static files, which is not the best way, right? So what we want to do is we want to leave that static file serving part to Nginx and our uh, Node.js server should be handled by Express itself, right? So first things first, let's just go ahead and install Nginx. So I'm gonna say apt update first of all, so that it updates all the packages repositories so that we get later software. Then next we can say, um, you know, we want to install Nginx. This is gonna install an Nginx server and it would allow us to serve static files, just like I said. So once it is installed, we can see the status of Nginx by typing service Nginx status and you can see it says me active. So that means Nginx is now up and ready. We can also verify that by copying this IP address and pasting it in a new tab. And just like that, you can see that we get welcome to Nginx. Why? Because Nginx by default runs on port 80. So there we go. So that is why you, you are able to see Nginx by default. Okay, so the next thing is we want to install MongoDB because you know that we have been using MongoDB in the code and obviously we need the database in order to connect to it first of all so let's just go ahead and just say apt install mongodb and this should 
be enough for the most part. So once we say yes, it's going to install MongoDB from the official repositories and just hang on a minute or two here, probably less and it would be done. So here we go, you can see MongoDB has been set up and if I do same thing with MongoDB, MongoDB status, you can see that MongoDB is also running. Now one quick thing about MongoDB is that MongoDB runs on port number Mongo. It runs on port number 27017, but you can clearly see right here that it is binded to local host IP address, right? This is super important. You want to make sure this is local host IP address because if this is 0.0.0.0, .0 then somebody from the internet as well can access it, right? So I can go ahead and verify this by saying 27017 here, and you can see we get nothing uh, because MongoDB is not exposed on the internet. If it was exposed on the internet, then you will get a something, a message like, hey, you are trying to talk over HTTP for a TCP socket, something like that, right? So you want to absolutely make sure that your MongoDB is binded to your local interface and not to the production, that is not to the internet, that is 0.0.0.0. .0 .0 .0. So once we have this set up, we are good to go, right? Now, the only thing we need is Node.js. Now, my favorite way of sort of installing Node.js is to just install it from the repositories, which gets us an old node. So I'm gonna say at install node, or not really node, but NPM instead of Node.js. And I'll just tell you why. So we will say yes to it, which will grab NPM, which is probably going to be an old one and uh, using that as the you know base we're going to install another npm package known as n now this n package is going to help us manage the versions of node but on production for the most part i i can safely assume you would need a single version of node only so we'll just install a single version so you can see if i do npm v we get a 3.5.2 which is a way too old node and uh, i don't know if we can get node like this, but you can see we have node eight, which is way too old. So let's just go ahead and install a package known as n, like this, npm install dash gn. And now I'm just gonna say n12. Now node 12 is the, you know, latest LTS, or maybe node 14 is the LTS release, but you get the idea. So you can see, now if I go ahead and do node v, we get, well, we get uh, the old one. So let's just go ahead and exit it and just start the SSH shell again. This would be root at the rate one, two, three, four, hit enter. And now you can see if I write node V, we're gonna get 12.19 and for NPM V, we'll get the correct versions. Now we can see that Git is installed by default. So we, the only thing we need to do is just go to the project which you have, copy the URL or maybe like, you know, uh, I don't know how you would, yeah. So you're gonna copy this or maybe like HTTPS, just copy this and paste git clone and then this URL. So once we do that, you can see it clones the project like this. We can do a CD into that, this and now I can just go ahead and start the script like this. So you can see we get some errors that cannot find anything. So let's just fix that first of all. I'm just gonna run yarn in the folder and yarn is also not installed. So first of all, let's just go ahead and install it with NPM itself, because why not? And now I can just run yarn in the folder, which is gonna install our relevant packages, the mongoose, express, all that stuff. And now I can say node script.js and we can see we get our server up with this, right? So one thing, if we can take a look in the code, is that you can see we are binding it to 13371 right now. So if I go ahead and take a look right here at 13371, we can see we get our document and we get our application just like that. So I can say hello, add it, we get hello like this, we get world, add it, world like this. If I refresh this, you can see we get hello world from the server itself and from the database actually. So if I go ahead and, you know, just go to networks tab and refresh this, you can see we perform this get request, which gets us data from the database, right? We have already coded this logic. Now, 
This is not what we want to do, right? We want the front end, that is these files to be served by Nginx and then we want rest of the traffic to be served by the node process. So let's just see how we can do that. So let me just go ahead and close the server first of all and I'm gonna go to a folder known as etc Nginx and sites available, I think, right? So once you go in this folder, you're gonna see a default file, which is the file which would be responsible for, you know, redirecting us to the correct places. So you can see right now the root of the project is set to our www.html. I want to change it to root and let me just go ahead and actually open a different session as well because that would be helpful. Root at the rate one, two, three, four. And we want to change this root to our assets folder, right? Why we want to change this? Because this would now be served from Nginx instead of, um, you know, Node.js server. So if I do a PWD here, you can see this is where we are. And I'm just gonna go ahead and say that correct thing. So once we set the root to that, you can see on location slash, we try the files in the directory itself. If we do not find anything, then we just send 404. So that should be enough to get us started at least. I'm just gonna say service nginx restart, restart. And if we say service nginx status, oops, status, you could see that it is still running. So if we go ahead and go to the home page, that is the port 80 now, you can see that we get 404 not found. So the reason you can see we get these errors is because we have some permission issue. So let's just go ahead and open a file known as etc nginx and I'm gonna open a file known as nginx.conf and I'm gonna go ahead and change the user in which we are running from www data to root. Now some people might consider this as insecure that we are running Nginx as root now because if Nginx is compromised, that gives root access to the server itself. But trust me, if Nginx is compromised, then you have number one, bigger problems. And number two, if you are using this setup while having security in mind, you should first think not operate this in the root. Number three, you should go ahead and actually use Docker containers or some sort of containerization instead of running it on the bare metal. So, just just to put this message out if you are concerned about security this is all the stuff which you have which you should be doing right away this tutorial is for people who are beginning who are beginners so i'm just going to omit that detail so once we make that change you can say service nginx restart and once you do that if you refresh it now you can see on code.js we get the correct file and if i go ahead and go to the main domain, we get the correct output. But you'll still see that our XHR request, that, our, that is our Ajax request will fail. Why? Because our node server is not running. So first of all, let's just go back to, let's just go back to our node folder and let's just go ahead and start our node server. And how do we do that? We're gonna do that with something known as PM2. Now PM2 is a process manager for node and the way we're gonna do that is say, uh, first of all, npm install global PM2. So it's just gonna install PM2 globally and then we'll be using PM2 to start the server. And just you just have to start it once and later on it will automatically restart if it crashes, if anything happens, it'll automatically do that. So you have to say PM2 start script.js and hit enter and you can see it starts it in the fork mode. So if I do pm2 stats now, you could pm2 status, not stats, you can see that your server is right now running. It is not consuming any CPU. It's consuming 60 megabytes of RAM, which is fine for a single node process. Now you could see that our server is running, but we are still not able to, you know, just go ahead and use it. And the reason for that, again, is because our server is hosted on port number 13371 and not on port number, uh, you know, 80, which is what we are using right now. So let's just go ahead and change that. So what we're going to do next is go back to etc nginx 
and default sites available and default oops just like that and we're going to edit the default file and in the block below we're going to say just like you can see that whenever you hit a location of slash try this particular code whenever we hit a directive of location slash api what we want to do is we just want to proxy pass we want to proxy pass this to localhost and then 13371 right or you can say 127.0.0.1 whatever you like this would also work right so if you go ahead and save this and the reason i'm doing this is because if you go back to code you can see all of our rest api endpoint uses slash api at the beginning right so we know that you know all the relevant api endpoints are going to start like this so if we go ahead and save this you can see that now if you if you refresh service nginx restart so now you can see it works i can remove this i can add a new task i can do you know all sorts of stuff but there's one little thing which is left and that is if i go to 13371 right now you can see that it still works right so what we want to do is we want to restrict our application to only be accessible on port number 80 and nothing else so how do we do that so how do we do that we do that in the code so let's just go back and see the way we are doing it is you know we just specify a port number so if we go ahead and specify a host name as well you can see it is another callback which listen accepts so we used to specify localhost or 127.0.0.1 in this case and now it will not listen on all networks so it pretty much becomes just like how, how our mongoose works so if we go ahead and you know say that listens only on localhost and if we push this change later on we can grab this change back and uh, go to this directory which we have and we can say git pull origin master and we can just say pm2 restart script right because that is the name of our application so once we do that you can if you refresh now you're going to see it does not connect but it will absolutely connect just fine if you visit the main page right so if we refresh it now you can see everything works just fine now you do not have your mongoose exposed 27017 you do not have your node server exposed only nginx is working and nginx redirects all the slash api request to your running node process which is using pm2 under the hood and everything of this everything all the infrastructure is deployed using linode so that is pretty cool right so this is how you will actually deploy a custom solution on a Linux server using Nginx and Node.js and Linode. Super important stuff to know when you're trying to understand how servers and everything work. And it is exciting as well because you're going to learn so much when you're building um, stuff with Linux. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. If you liked it, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you then in the next one really soon.